guys, RW here in the kitchen on Little Mountain and uh, making a second batch of waxers and it occurred to me that I should show you guys some important things that, you, that, that I've never really shown you before. The important thing of the bent spoon. The spoon that is bent. So what you do, man, is when nobody's looking, you go over here to your kitchen drawer where your spoons are. And you just sort of reach in there and you grab it. And then you head for the shop as quickly as possible before anybody notices this, that there's a spoon thief on Little Mountain. Alright. It's a beautiful day out here. If you're a toad, if you're a toad, you might like this kind of weather. It's good toad weather. Yeah. Out. There's some critters out there enjoying this kind of misty, cool. It's about 31 degrees. It's right in between freezing and not freezing. It's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. It makes the lichen really light up on the trees. The lichen. It's bright green right now. Very nice. So, come down to the shop. This isn't too bad off today. I, I keep trying to keep it clean. It's a constant battle. We come on over here to the vice. Oh, oh, important. If you have something like a tripod, you should use it because otherwise you might give your, your viewers vertigo by constantly swarming the camera around like it's some kind of MTV Cribs video. We don't want that. We don't want the MTV Cribs look. We want the, uh, the CyberDruid uh, PC shop look. Okay, so I think that's pretty much in focus. It's nothing to it, guys. You literally grip the spoon at the first third. You just sort of eyeball it in thirds there. You know, where it'll grab it. And you give it a tweak, man. You go... Hey, baby. 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 And uh, you make yourself a nice funnel shape. That's what you're after is the funnel funnel kind of uh, shape. So it'll pour it right into that sh shell without being uh, a pain in the cannabowitz. Okay. I'm going to show you now, man, in case you couldn't see before. You'll be able to see now. I have grasped the spoon. Okay. If you are in doubt as to where to grasp the spoon, just set a vise up right next to your computer monitor and try and line the, the vise and the spoon and everything up with my, my video. I'm sure that'll be very helpful. I'm going to give that a little more tweakage. I'm just not happy with it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, let's take a look at it from this side to get more of an idea. Because it's got a spring back. Stamped metal. Springy. Springy. Swingy. So, now, I've got a spoon, man. See my spoon? Alright, now we'll go back on up to the the house and uh, to the kitchen there and I will show you something else. Okay, so we covered the all important spoon. Now when you first start doing this, you know, your very first box of shells, you capture your shot in something, maybe a Tupperware or you put it in this afterwards or whatever. So there's your nice shot ready to go in for maybe let's say 25 rounds. And you've got your 25 trimmed up shells sitting in something. Okay, you're good to go. You might be inclined to use some sort of a pan. Now, I did this for a bit, and it's not bad. It's not bad, but it's better to have something that's got a smaller bottom and is taller for the way you have to operate the spoon. I'm going to show you some spoon operation, which you may not know about, because it's not just making the spoon. You must know how to operate the spoon. I'm going to tell you about that soon. Mm. 
So making waxers can be kind of a zen operation. And rather than use a pan, I like to use a can. Use the can. Please understand, man. The can is superior to the pan for how you need to operate the spoon. And it's something I'm going to tell you about very, very soon, man. Like I was saying, this could be a zen-like operation. You could be uh, in the privacy of your kitchen with no one about, relaxing, making yourself some ammunition. And I'll just show you my little how I go about it. So so you can understand why I think of this as a as kind of a nice little thing for your mind. Help you unwind. Okay, spend a little time. And I like to hand myself the shells with my right hand. I don't know why. I just like to hand them to my left hand. And then I just proceed on down the grid board. I just push them on in there like that. And I just kind of fill her up. It doesn't really take very long. It takes less time for me to fill this grid board than it did for me to waste your time walking down to my shop and finding myself a place to set up my camera and then finally, finally, finally taking the spoon out of my pocket and clamping it into the vise. And then fiddling about with that back and forth like some kind of madman bending that spoon more and more and more until I was satisfied with this curvature. I would say all of that took considerably longer than this clip right here that I'm showing you, man. I'm showing you how you can just kind of get both of your, uh, your right and your left brain working together here by making your hands feed each other, feed the shells. And later, when you're taking them out and you're putting them into the box, you, you feed them back. It's very yin yang. It's groovy. It's groovy. So I'm going to tell you something about spoon technique. It's coming right up. So uh, go ahead and light up. Sit down. Enjoy the show. Oh no. You know what happens when that happens? Nothing, man. Absolutely nothing happens. You just go about your business. This is far from a level surface, but I'm not concerned with that. I'm concerned with the liquidity, the temperature of my wax. Now I've turned the heat up and I've let it sit on the eye. It's still quite hot and liquid. Don't need to mess with it. It's not terribly hot. I can handle it by hand now. So this is part of the technique, the spoon technique, which I'm going to show you now. Hopefully you can capture this. Spoon technique. Now the thing is, is you want to go along in a nice regular manner, filling these things. So what you're doing is every single time you're taking a scoop of wax, and you're going right to the hole. Scoop of wax, right to the hole. And you kind of let it flop. Just flop in there more like a releasing than it is a sort of guiding thing. You just kind of let that wax just flop out in the hole. Now, I'm not going to do all these. I don't want to get to that point. I want to get to the spoon technique. You tilt your can so your liquid is just about to come out. You reach down into your nice pile of shot and you get a nice side scoop on it, man. I'm talking about the side. You want the side scoop. You get the dry shot. Shot has very little liquid in it. You guide the shot. You let the shot ride down into the liquid. It makes a beautiful matrix. If you want to, you can give it a little dab. Just like that, just to make sure there's no shot sticking up to cause a primer strike in your mag. And each time. This is the really zen part now, when you're really tuned in, man. You'll be able to put exactly the right amount of shot. 
not too much, not too little. See, I've got, I've got 17 shots too many there. That's how far off I'm of my zen. See, it's like a, it's just like throwing the, 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 the yarrow stalks, man. You just, if you got it exactly right, you won't have any. You won't have any left over, and it'll be perfect, perfectly perfect. But there is no perfection because everything is an illusion. You're just in the matrix, dude. And you can bend the spoon. Um, you'll have to use a vice though, because it's it's no special effects here on Little Mountain can't use your mind to bend the spoon. You become one with the spoon when you're using the spoon, however. Now, I wouldn't take any red or blue pills while doing this. Just, just people come one with the spoon without any pill usage, please. Thank you. So, I have done six of these just to demo it. You can imagine the zenness of it all as you go through with 25 of these each time trying to get exactly the right amount of shot. Make them so that they all come up to the top, you know, where you can just see the shot, but the shot's just under the wax. That prevents a primer strike in the accident. So I hoped that this, the zen on the spoon and seeing how to make your own spoon of some help to you guys. I hope it is. I hope. And that you can see the kit. The final deal is, is that after you pop your shells, man, while this wax is still nice and soft like this, it is a joy to scrape this off. And then it can go back in for the next load. All you need is a putty knife, a soup can, a spoon. Basically, if you're a hobo, you're already set. Thanks for watching, guys.